always wondered what is complex analysis about you might have gone through a one semester course in complex analysis or perhaps you are going to learn complex analysis in the next semester and whatever be the reason what i am going to talk about today might throw some kind of a bird's eye view some kind of global outlook about what complex analysis is about rather than it may not directly help you okay uh, to score high grades okay but it will make you understand what is the word and this is very much needed because in my long career what i have found when you go to some of the elitist institutes there will be a lot of wonderment as though complex analysis is something great you are done and etc etc but at no time they will come down to you and say what you ought to learn what are the significant and subtle aspects of complex analysis which you might have missed in a master's degree course very rarely it's that okay and on the other hand they will talk about higher aspects of complex analysis rather than what is a typical master analysis master course in complex analysis about i am going to talk about those things okay but learn this try to understand keep it in mind when you are going through or when you are reviewing what you have learned you will see it gives a lot of insight to some other things which you learn okay and you will thank me later it will take a couple of years perhaps to for you to appreciate what i was i am trying to do now okay and the best reference you can have for this is my book on a pathway to complex analysis okay it's available you can indian edition only indian edition so you can buy that okay so let us start say usually what is a in case you have gone through complex analysis course you typically one semester it's a, what i call usually complex calculus course calculus not analysis because let me tell you some of things at the end of the one semester course what will re, you would remember in your mind will be Riemann sphere and birational transformations or Mobius transformations or bilinear transformation A Z plus B by C Z plus D, okay, and radius of convergence of a given power series, okay, and uh, something about uh, uh, yeah Cauchy-Riemann equations and some other things, some two problems Cauchy interval formula, something to some problems related to maximum modulus principle then Lorentz series computation of uh, you know by identifying the singularities and the residues at those points and then the evaluation of real integrals using residue theorem and then later finding the zeros of some polynomial functions or some such thing using argument principle or Roche's theorem that's about it so mostly you would remember lot of calculations computations etc Okay. It's like the way you learn calculus before learning analysis, the real analysis. It's something similar. Okay. Many of the things will be very hazy. People will say simply connected, homotopic, this and that. They will use too much of words which will leave you quite uncertain. You may not know. So what is complex analysis about? Are you curious? Let's move on. The first important thing about complex analysis is to learn a power series. Something like Cn z minus a to the power n, n run greater than equal to zero. And Cn are in complex numbers, a of course is a complex number. Okay. So what one knows is there exists please okay review my video on videos on power series okay that's the most important thing okay right. keep that in mind so let us recall the complex thing the first thing what one usually remembers yeah i forgot to say let me go back what do, another thing one usually remembers about some kind of a wonderment or some kind of puzzle is if uh, 
a function is complex differentiable differentiable from C to C once, then it's infinitely differentiable. So you get excited, right? Right. And second thing is multi-valued functions. Remember, in modern mathematics, a function means it's single valued, right? There is nothing uh, comes out of multi-value. But from this kind of history of complex analysis, multi-valued functions were introduced, and so you keep talking about multi-valued functions and you get confused about various things okay and branch point logarithm branches of logarithm all these things okay so you you are essentially a bundle of confusions and wonderments okay and this is very similar to what a primitive human being felt okay he was completely stunned and he, he looked very amazed at natural phenomenon like rain sun raising and eclipses lightning and the rainbow yeah there are something which is wonderful there are something which is frightening okay you are a bundle of mixture mixture of these emotions but you do not get the hang of it how you do thanks to the effort of Raymond and of course Koshi we now have a handle over all these things in a very very precise and rigorous way that sense, that sense of rigor, what the modern mathematics achieve is never conveyed in a typical complex analysis course. Okay, right. So we are going to deal about that. So let us go back to the screen sharing. So see, look at that. If suppose I have a function, a subset u, which is open. Maybe I should use a smaller one. And suppose my f. Uh, from u to c is given and a is a point in u then I, you know f is differentiable at a this is a standard definition what do you do you simply say limit as z tends to a of f of z minus f of a by z minus a exists yeah then you, you if the derivative exists it's unique and you call it f dash a this complex number is called the derivative so this definition is exactly similar to the way you define differentiability of a function from an interval to r right so there is no difference so but it but you uh, you might have heard or you might already learn any such function is infinite differential that's not very correct as it is what you do is so i'm going to give you a different definition this definition is different from what you might have learned from your complex analysis course i say f yep, is holomorphic okay on u u okay f dash a exists for all a in U. that is f is differentiable on you on you that's it okay in classically they would have called it analytic but i don't want to use the definition you will see in a minute why i want to avoid that okay you will see that so your follow function on an open set remember you must be an open set a follow function is a function which is differentiable at each and every point of the domain that's it or the open set okay right so what you must have learned is that if f is differentiable if f is holomorphic then f dash is also holomorphic what does it mean that is f dash is also differentiable now since f dash is holomorphic f dash is also differentiable and it is holomorphic so that means all derivatives f and okay of z exists for all z in u and for every natural number n. Okay, you must have learned it, but this is the one thing which is some kind of a source of a wonderment for many students of complex analysis. Why this happens? Okay. The very surprising thing is what we are going to learn because any holomorphic function is something very interesting. What I want to say is the following. 
Okay. So what it says is this is the this is the main result of Cauchy's theory. I call it Cauchy's theory because this is Cauchy's theory it involves I mean, the so-called Cauchy's theorem, Cauchy course of the Cauchy's theorem and Cauchy interval formula. etc. All this combined I call it as Cauchy's theory. What does it say is that the following. Okay. <coughs> Any uh, let you be open. Let f from u to c be holomorphic. What does it mean? It's a differentiable on all, all of you. Then Okay, for every A in A, okay, there exists Cn equal to Cn of A complex numbers so that f of z is going to be okay, let for every A, okay, let's fix it, let me just go slow. So let A be in U, let R A positive be such that B A R A is contained in U. Then there exists C M which is C N A complex numbers so that F of Z is going to be C N Z minus A to the power N and running from 0 to infinity for all z in v a r e understand this okay so what does it say it says that if a function is holomorphic on u give me any a okay fix an open disk v a r which is completely contained in u then the function f is actually a power series. A power series in powers of what? Z minus A. That is F of Z equal to summation C n Z minus A to the power n. For R Z in the open disk B A R which is contained in U. So what are the inherent things? Therefore there is a power convergent power series on the right side and that converges to a function. That function is nothing other than the given holomorphic function here. And for which a it is true? This is true for each and every a in u. So what does it say? It says that if a function is holomorphic, then it is locally a power series. What do I mean by locally? For every a in the open set u, there is an open disk b a r which is contained in u. On that open disk b a r, my f is a power series. This is what really the Cauchy theorem or the Cauchy theory tells you about. Please understand, it's something fantastic. Right? So, this is what theory is about. Okay? Now, if you have learned the, my lectures about power series from my video lectures, then you know any power series is infinitely differentiable. Okay, in my th third video on uh, complex power series, I have shown it is differentiable. Okay, if you are given a power series, it is a differentiable function on the disk of convergence on B. Okay, and the derivative is also power series conversion. Okay, and so on. So, any pa complex power series is infinitely differentiable on what? On the disk of convergence, right? Now go back to what I have done. So I so this power series, okay. This power series is convergent on B A R E. Therefore, its disk of convergence contains B A R E, and that it converges, and the function is F of Z. And the right hand side is the power series. I know it is infinitely differentiable. Therefore, it follows 
my holomorphic function f which is once differentiable by assumption is going to be infinitely differentiable do you get it that is the first mystery solved so this is what you proved many what i have seen from my experiences many students who have gone through complex analysis course have not appreciated they all remember it's infinitely differentiable etc etc but why it is for the simple reason okay so let me introduce a new concept we will come back to this so let's go back i think i forgot to screen share so this power series okay is convergent and it's a disk of convergence contain b a r a on this this power series on this disk equal to the function f what do i know is the right hand power series is infinitely differentiable from the knowledge of power series therefore it follows my function f is infinitely differentiable on b a r a but what what a at for every a in u that means f is going to be infinitely differentiable on all of u right okay and second thing which i did was let me make sure second thing i did was i am defining another concept called analytic function okay this is what usually you call but just keep it in mind for my lecture keep them separate okay i say a function is f is analytic if it is locally a power series what does it mean you give me any a in u i can find see when r positive so that the disk b r is contained in u and there exists constant c n so that f of z is summation c n z minus a to the power n for every z in b r so come back so what i have sh shown so what is the just main result of cauchy's theory therefore it says that any holomorphic function is analytic do you understand what it mean yeah any holomorphic function means f is differential on all of you and when it is analytic what does it mean the function f is locally a power series given any point a in the domain there is an open disk on which f is represented by a power series but a power series is always infinitely differentiable right this is the just the main core of all the cauchy's results this is what usually one has to one misses okay this is what english people say missing the wood for the trees you would go to lot of small small things you forgot what are the main result this is the main result have you understood enjoy this okay and don't worry about my way you use our anal analytic function is different from your definition for the time being keep this separate okay yeah and notice that any analytic function is holomorphic suppose i have an analytic function it is holomorphic why if it is an analytic function it's locally a power series okay therefore the power, the power series is convergent in br some r positive so that br is contained in u right and therefore it's differentiable on br that means f is differentiable on the open set br this is true for every a that means f is going to be differentiable on all of u and hence holomorphic okay therefore cauchy's theorem proves a non trivial part any analytic function is holomorphic that is easy but any holomorphic function is analytic that is the major difficult result which is the heart of cauchy's theory okay pause think about pause the video think about and then come back okay right now i said something about it's a locally a power series but notice that look at here f of z is let us say cn z minus a to the power n okay and with uh, for z in b a r can you move? assume that okay so assume if is holomorphic or same as saying analytic on an open set u in c fix a point a in u choose an r such that okay now what is f of a f of a is if you put z equal to a then what you get is c naught right now remember 
It's a power series, therefore I can differentiate it term wise. Therefore, what is f dot z? f dot z is going to be n times c n times z minus a to the power n minus 1. Right? Here n runs from 1 to infinity now. Yeah? Therefore, what is f dash a? f dash a is going to be c1. Do you see that? When put, I put z equal to a, the only surviving term will be this. Yeah? And what is f dub dash z? This is child's play, but let's just do it for the timing n into n minus 1 into c n into z minus a to the power n minus 2. Because I have to differentiate this. This is how convergent power series. Yeah. Okay. This is a convergent power series. Where is this fellow? This is a convergent power series here on this disk. Therefore, again I can differentiate it term wise. If I differentiate, I get this. That is f dash z. Right. Okay. Now, what is f w dash a? You can see it is going to be. When n equal to 2, this is 0, therefore it is going to be 2 into 1 into c2. Therefore, c2 is nothing other than f w dash a by 2 factorial. Right? So, what is f triple dash? I will just do it. Don't get m and upset. This is fun. n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into c n into z to the power z minus a to the power n minus 3 therefore you have triple dash a okay when n equal to 3 when i put z equal to a this is 0 therefore it will give me 3 into 2 into 1 yeah into c3 therefore c3 is yeah triple dash a right 3 plus 2 then. so by induction you can see Okay, C n is yeah, the nth derivative of what a by n factorial. Yeah, so my function, analytic function here yeah, for z in B A R is nothing else than since I know it is now infinitely differentiable, I I also know what the coefficients in the power series are. The C n's are nothing other than the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial into z minus a to the power n. Okay. Pause. Review. Proceed. So, uh, what have you done? So, if I assume a function is holomorphic, I proved it's analytic, therefore it's locally a power series. But if I give a power series, okay, then the coefficients are not arbitrary. Okay, this has nothing to do with holomorphicity. If you given any power series, summation Cm, z minus a to the power n, n run from 0 to infinity, okay, the Cm's are nothing other than the nth derivative of f at a divided by n factorial. Notice that therefore the C n also depends on A. Right? It's the nth derivative of A but A divided by n factorial. Okay, the n factorial is common independent of A, but the part, the constant C n depends on A. And what is the expression you got? What is the expression? So expression you got is Taylor series. So think carefully again. That's why you have to learn real numbers also very well so that you know you can appreciate these things here. So what I have done is f is a holomorphic. That is, I assumed it's a differentiable on an open set once. Okay. Then it's a locally a power series. Therefore, I know it is analytic. That okay, it's infinitely differentiable. Since it's infinitely differentiable, I know what is okay the nth derivative of at a. Right. Then I am saying you start the any disk B A R which is contained in U, then my function here on the disk is the following power series. What is the power series? It's a Taylor series of U, namely summation n equal to 0 to infinity nth derivative of F at A divided by n factorial 
times that minus e to the power n. Please understand. Okay. So keep playing with these things. Make sure this is what. Okay. When you start with. The, okay. I will come to that later. Okay. The so called Cauchy's theorem that is integration along a path or what you call contour integral, path integral, whatever you want to call. It. There is a lot of names. Okay. Yeah, integrating along a path or a curve, whatever. Okay. Finally, when you derive, this is what you derive. Okay. You derive Cauchy's theorem, you derive it. Cauchy integral formula. Finally, you show any holomorphic function is analytic. And hence, okay, the function is given by a, a, it's a Taylor series. Okay, okay, the function at in a disk of around A is given by the Taylor series of a in the disk. Isn't it great? Yeah, that's what it is. Think about learn. Even if you are going to learn, keep this in mind, you will see what we are doing. It will make a lot of sense to you. Okay. Right. Let's go back. Now I can ask the next question. Right. Okay. Now how do I prove it? F holomorphic on an open set U implies F analytic on U. Okay, as I said, all the results of which are named after Cauchy go towards the proof of this. What it tries to do is the following. Yeah, before that, let us first assume, suppose assume this is true, we know, okay, f is analytic. Then notice that I know f dash exists and f nth derivative exists, okay, on you. This is fine, but there is something more interesting. Can you show that there is a g? which is holomorphic on u so that g dash equal to f yeah this exists why yeah this is because you you must have seen that such a g is called a primitive primitive of yeah. that is a function g holomorphic that is differential from u to c so that g dash equal to f then g is primitive okay how does it follow well, it's at least it may not exist on all of you okay it may not exist on all of you, but there is a G for every A in U. There is R positive such so that VAR is contained in U and on VAR this exists. So what I what I want to claim is this is the next result. This is also Cauchy's result. Okay. Primitive local primitives exist. Or primitives of your primitives of your holomorphic function exists locally. That means if f is a function from u to c holomorphic, and if you give me a in u, then there exists an R positive so that VR is contained in u. On this, there is a function g from VAR to c such so that g dash equal to I am just repeating whatever I said. So, exists a local primitive is also part of Cauchy's result. How does it follow? That is very easy. Suppose I ask, since f is holomorphic, implies f is analytic. Let us assume this is proved, right? If f is analytic, that means with our standard notation by now, I do not want to repeat Cnz minus a to the power n, right? So what should be G of Z? Make a guess. Remember G also should be holomorphic. When I differentiate it should be a and remember G is holomorphic it is analytic therefore it should be given locally by a power series. So when I differentiate it term wise I should get F. The power series of F. So what is the result? Yeah. 
ya C n by n n from maybe let me write it in a slightly different way. So suppose this exists. So let, let me do it. Okay. Let us see d n z minus a to the power n. Therefore, I differentiate it is n into d n into z minus a to the power n minus one. You understand that? Yeah. So I you got the powers of f. That means c n z minus a to the power n must be equal to here. I, the power of n should be there. The should be n plus one into d n plus one into z minus a to the power n. The nth power of here and the nth power of here should coincide. Therefore, what must be my dn? My dn must be, or if you want dn plus 1 must be cn by n plus 1. I hope I am making it correct. Yeah. What is that not equal to e? Yeah. Therefore, uh, let us look at g of z equal to summation cn by n plus 1 z minus a to the power n. Uh, dn plus 1 z minus a to the power 1. Let me just make sure I am doing everything correct. So n plus 1, dn plus 1 z minus a to the power n, right? This. Therefore, dn plus 1 must be cn. Okay, right. cn by n plus 1 to the power n. And dn plus 1, sorry. Yeah, right. Do you agree with that? dn plus 1 is the uh, coefficient of n plus 1 to the power of z minus a. Therefore, okay, what I wrote earlier, I just corrected it. And and this is uh, obviously, see, yeah, this, this is, okay, this converges on B A R. This is very easy to show. I will not stop to do that. And g dash is going to be, let's see, n plus 1 into n plus 1 into z minus a to the power n. Okay. So you get this is the opposite. So what what have you seen? If f is a holomorphic function, locally primitive exist. Where how does it follow? Think about it. Again, just because it's an analytic function, that means it's a locally a power series. So any power series has a primitive. Very easy computation, right? We found it. Working backwards, we found any power series has a permutative. Therefore, any holomorphic function has local permutatives because any holomorphic function is locally a power series. Do you see? It's so the beauty. So we are done. Local power. Okay. Please go through it. I know it will be tough. Even if you have gone through the course, you may not have been gone through this thing. This perspective this line of thinking but watch it once or twice and slowly re rewind your course you will understand better and if you have not gone through a course keep this in mind these are all very nebulous ideas and when you go through a course you will see oh that's what Kumarisan said that's why you are proving this result why this is happening you will have a much better understanding okay and I know it's a tough thing Please bear with me for one or two more lectures. You would really appreciate what Congress Analysis is about. Okay. Thanks for watching. We will meet again.